Okay, in this video, we are gonna be doing Calc AB review quiz number seven. It's pretty much about differential equations. Let's take a look at the problems. All right, number one, the slope field for the differential equation, dy dx equals two x plus y minus three is shown above. Draw in solution curves through the three indicated points on the slope field above. So what we wanna do is imagine that this slope field is just flowing water. You're at the point, you drop something in, and you just see where it carries, right? So I'm gonna start with the point that's at zero, one. At the point zero, one, it looks to me like this is a linear solution. I could definitely understand if you're not 100% sure about that. Later on in the problems, you will show that it definitely is the linear solution. So I'm just gonna sketch in a linear solution there. I'm just gonna follow the contours of the uh, slope field, and there you go. Now you can see that has divided the plane into uh, curves that look a certain way to uh, the right or above this line and curves that look a certain way to the left or below. Uh, so for example here, if I drop in a point at like two, two, just drop something in the water there, we're gonna go up that way or maybe we go this way. So the linear solution is actually a tangent um, or an asymptote I should say uh, for all the other types of solutions. Now if we're at the point one negative two, we drop something in just follow the contours. We're gonna go this way or we go this way. These are our three curves. Um, so you wanna show the three different types of curves. One of them should definitely be linear in this case. Uh, let's take a look at the next part. All right, the slope field for the differential equation shown above, we already saw that. So there's, I think, three viable solutions to what we're gonna do here. So find M and B such that the linear function Y equals MX plus B is a solution to the differential equation. One option, is that you just found the linear solution in the previous part, but that might be the most dangerous version of the solution. So I'm gonna do two different ways uh, that are a little more analytical. So option number one, what I'm gonna do is basically sub in. So uh, dy dx we know is two x plus y uh, minus three, right? So two x, now think to yourself, what is y equal? Well, we're just told in the problem, y is mx plus b, so let's sub that in and then there's still a minus three. What I'm gonna do is rearrange this thing so that it's basically factored. So I want the coefficient of x to be very obvious and I want the constant term to be very obvious. So I will rewrite this as dy dx is the quantity two plus m times x plus the quantity b minus three. Um, now, we also know that y is equal to uh, mx plus b. And because y is equal to mx plus b, we could just take the derivative to find dy dx. So dy dx is definitely equal to just m in that case. Now, because this is another way of writing the derivative, I'm gonna write it so it looks like the purple version. So I'm gonna say it's zero times x and then plus m. I'm gonna equate the coefficients. So equating coefficients means look at what's in front of x for both of these because they must be the same, right? By the transitive property, they're both dy dx. So the coefficients of x, 2 plus m must equal 0. And then also, uh, I mean, well, that'll tell us m is negative 2 for sure. And then the constant terms, the b minus 3 must equal m. And we know that m uh, is negative 2. So that means b minus 3 is negative 2, which means that b must be equal to 1. Now think back to that solution that you had, that uh, linear solution on your slope field. That was also the line negative 2x plus 1, if you go back and write the equation of it. So these make sense to me as answers. There's another way of doing this particular thing for a linear function. The reason that it's particular to linear functions is that all linear functions have something very common about their uh, concavity, and that is the fact that their concavity will be 0. All linear functions have 0 concavity. So uh, dy dx we know is m, which means our second derivative would have to be equal to zero. We can find the second derivative, right? We know dy dx is two x plus y minus three, which means the second derivative is gonna be two plus dy dx. Don't forget the derivative of y is dy dx. We know this dy dx is just this thing, so we can make our substitution. So we have two and then plus dy dx, which is two x plus y minus three. And then this will clean up into just two x plus y minus one. From above, we know the second derivative should be equal to zero at the solution we're looking for. So it should be the case that two x plus y minus one equals zero. And then if that's the case, we can rearrange to get y equals negative two x plus one and say that m is negative two and that b is one. All right, so three options. One was look at the slope field option. Well, I mean, let's say that's option three or option zero. Option 
Zero is look at the slope field. Option one, do the substitution, take the derivative, equate coefficients, which I actually think is probably the best, safest way to do it. And then option two is to make a note that uh, the concavity of a linear function will be zero and work from there. All right, let's take a look at part C. So does the solution curve through negative one five have a relative max, relative min, or neither at that point justify? As soon as you're working with an implicit differential equation, so there's x's and y's, you should immediately think second derivative test for this type of problem. So I'm gonna use a second derivative test. So I need to know the value of the derivative and the value of the second derivative. So uh, dy dx at negative one five, we're just gonna sub in, that's gonna give us negative two plus five minus three, which is definitely zero. So it's actually the case that sometimes you don't get zero and the answer is just neither and you kind of move on. In this case, we have zero, so now we need the second derivative. So our second derivative, you could import from the previous part, but I'm just gonna say is two plus dy dx because at negative one five, I know dy dx is zero, so this is just gonna give us two. And two, we know is greater than zero, obviously. So now we are ready to say what our conclusion is, right? So uh, we are at a horizontal tangent line and we are concave up, which means we're at a relative minimum. So I will say at negative one five, dy dx is zero and the second derivative is greater than zero. Therefore, y equals f of x has a relative minimum at that point. Now you don't strictly speaking have to just, you don't have to say like by second derivative test. I think you should say it and I think you should think about it and never try to use a number line test on this. How are you gonna make a number line for something that has X's and Y's? You're talking about parts of the plane at this point, not like to the left or to the right. So second derivative test, let's take a look at the next part. Describe the region of the plane for which the solution curves are concave down and justify. All right, so we're gonna to need to talk about concavity here. So uh, I'm just going to grab the second derivative that we found in part B, or you could solve for it again if you need to. Uh, we're looking for concave, oh, we're looking for concave down. I accidentally have solved concave up here. Uh, same idea though. Uh, so, I mean, I guess I would get this wrong, uh, strictly speaking. So if the question had been concave up, we would be looking for where the second derivative is positive, which would mean that we would need our second derivative to be greater than zero, which would mean that we would need y to be greater than negative two x plus one. So my answer, if I were answering for concave up, which it turns out I'm not, would be that all the solution curves um, above the line y equals negative 2x plus 1 are concave up. I actually should have answered concave down, which means I should have done the second derivative is less than 0, which means I would have had all the curves below the line y equals negative 2x plus 1 are concave down. So I'm going to mark that wrong for myself, but hopefully this is useful to you anyway, and I'm not going to go back and change it. All right, let's take a look at uh, the next question. Given the differential equation, dw dt is w minus 5 with particular solution w of t such that w of 5 is 2. Uh, for what value of c is y equals c a solution? Uh, that's a weird way of writing that. But anyway, y equals c is a solution to the differential equation. Well, if y equals c is a solution, that just means that our derivative, so dy dx, uh, would equal 0. Don't get confused by the switch in all of the letters here. It's like y and w are kind of interchangeable on these types of problems x and t are kind of interchangeable, and you will see them used interchangeably, and it is a little confusing. But we're looking for where the derivative is equal to zero. If the derivative is zero, then zero is equal to w minus five, which means w is definitely equal to five, which means c would have to be equal to five. You can visually see that if you just plug five in, you'll get zero, so you don't have to really do a lot of work on this, and I think that's a good thing. All right, let's look at the next part. Write the equation line tangent to wt um, at t equals 5. All right, so first we have to understand. w is a function of t, which means this 5 is a t value. So our ordered pair has t equals 5, w is equal to 2. So the ordered pair itself is 5 comma 2 because we have our independent variable and our dependent variable. That's important because for a tangent line, you have to know what the independent and dependent variables are. Now we have to find the slope. So w is... Uh, going to equal five. So dw dt at five two is gonna be two minus five because we have to plug the w value in. The most common mistake here would be to plug in the t value, but we're getting dw dt is negative three. And then our tangent line, just make sure you use your correct ordered pair and your correct slope, and you'll get y minus two equals negative three quantity t minus five. Okay, uh, next up. Use this tangent line, uh, use the tangent line to w of t at t equals five, 
to approximate, uh, use this tangent line to W to, to approximate W of 4.9. That's also written incorrectly. Is this an over or underestimate? Uh, and try to justify it. All right, so first up, we have to approximate. Let's just grab our tangent line. We have to use an approximately equal to sign or we will lose points because we are approximating something. So W of 4.9 is approximately two minus three times the quantity, 4.9 minus five. So you could actually technically leave two minus three times the quantity, 4.9 minus five. I don't like to do that, but you can do it. I have gone ahead and said that that is 2.3. Um, all right, so now we need to say if this is an over or underestimate, we're gonna need the second derivative. So our second derivative is going to be the derivative of W minus five. The derivative of W is dW dt, and then the derivative of five is zero. So actually the second derivative is the same as the first derivative, which is kind of an interesting situation. Now we need to figure out if this is positive or negative. So if t is between 4.9 and five, I'm going to say that dw dt is definitely negative because we're somewhere between like two and 2.3. Um, so I'm saying that dw dt is negative. And if we are negative, then we are concave down and the solution curve will be, or rather the tangent line is above. And so we'll get an overestimate. So the solution curve is concave down. The tangent line gives an overestimate. And there you go. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Find the particular solution to the differential equation with w of 5 equals 2. We just have to solve this. I recommend that you put in a 1 and a set of parentheses because it will be obvious then that you can separate and integrate. So I've added in a 1 times w minus 5. Now I'm just going to separate. So dw over w minus 5 is going to be dt. Uh, integral signs. On the left-hand side, we'll get the natural log of the absolute value of w minus 5. And on the right, we get t plus c. If your dependent variable is inside a natural log, do not solve for c until you've exponentiated. I'm going to exponentiate. It involves skipping a couple of steps. You should always do this. Uh, we get a new value of c and then e to the t. Uh, I'm going to solve for c at this point because I think it's the first easy place to do that. So we're solving for c. Uh, we know that t is equal to 5 and w is equal to 2 because we've had discussions about that. Uh, we get this. Um, so that's negative 3 is c e to the fifth. Okay, we have negative 3 equals c e to the fifth. So I'm going to divide both sides by e to the fifth. I will get c equals negative 3 over e to the fifth. But, and that's okay. You could leave that and you could use it. I'm going to choose to rewrite it because I think it just looks better as negative 3 e to the negative fifth. Um, but either one would be totally acceptable. You don't have to do that step but you do have to go back and sub it in. So our final answer needs to be solved for w, so I'm gonna move the five to the other side and get w is five minus three e to the negative fifth um, and then e to the t, but, and you could leave that and get full credit, that would totally be fine. I'm gonna use properties of exponents and say it's five minus three e to the t minus five. So that's our particular solution, which just means solve this thing. There you go. Let's take a look at the next part. Find the particular solution, or just solve this thing, to the given differential equation with the initial condition. All right, dy dx is 6 minus 3y with y of 1 equals 4. All right, step one is we're going to find dy dx, or we're going to rewrite dy dx. I'm going to color code this thing. I do not like to do these problems with a negative leading coefficient for y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor negative 3 out. You get negative 3 quantity y minus 2. Now I will separate, and I will integrate. The reason I'm doing that step where I in, uh, factor is I find that people forget to use the chain rule all the time. When there's a negative leading coefficient, you forget your u substitution, you lose a negative sign, or you have a negative sign and it's like a little confusing what to do to deal with it. This is a much better approach. You should do it all the time. If there's a negative coefficient for y, factor it out, then separate. All right, integral signs. Uh, on the left, we're going to get that natural log situation again. Doesn't always happen, but it does if it needs to. Then on the right, we get negative 3x plus c. Uh, so we get y minus 2 is a new value of c, e to the negative 3x. We're going to solve for c at this point. Uh, we know that y of 1 is 4. So x is 1 and y is 4. So 4 minus 2 is going to be c, e to the negative 3rd. Uh, so that's 2 is c, e to the negative 3rd. So we could say that c is 2 over e to the negative 3rd. But again, I like to rewrite that. Either way you write it, we then have to sub it in, and we have to solve for y, right? So you got to get y by itself to have a function. So 
I'm going to say y is 2 plus 2 e to the third times e to the negative 3x. And then I'm going to use properties of exponents again. But remember, that's a good solution. You could leave it. But I think this is a better looking solution. And so I decided to go one step further. All right, next up. Uh, dy dx is x plus 2 over y with y of 4 equals negative 3. All right. Uh, I'm going to color code again. I just like to do that in the videos. I don't really do it in real life. Although it's useful, uh, we will separate. So in this case, we're not going to get a natural log because uh, y is not, we don't have dy over y. Integral signs, we're going to get 1 half y squared. And then on this side, you kind of have two, two choices. You could do 1 half x squared plus 2x plus c. I'm going to do something a little weirder. I'm going to treat it as the quantity x plus 2 and just go 1 half quantity x plus 2 squared plus c. Same answer either way in the in the final result. Uh, what I like to do is solve for c as soon as I can. Here, I think solving for c is not bad. You might choose to multiply by 2 first. That's totally fine. You'll get a slightly different value of c, but our final answers will be the same. So I'm going to plug in 4 for x and negative 3 for y. So you get 9 over 2. And then uh, you get 1 half of 6 squared plus c. So that's... Uh, 36 over 2, so 9 minus 36 is negative 27 over 2. C is negative 27 over 2. We take our C, we plug it in, uh, and we're going to look like this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything I see by 2 to get y squared equals the quantity x squared, x plus 2 squared minus 27. I'm now going to take the square root because I have to get y by itself, not y squared. So I take the square root, I get this. This cannot be our answer because that's not a function. Right? Our answer needs to be a function that's continuous on an interval that contains the initial condition. Look at the initial condition, and you know that y of 4 is negative 3, or in particular, y of 4 is negative. The only way you're getting a negative out of this thing is if you choose the negative square root. So our final answer here is the negative square root of quantity x plus 2 squared minus 27. You could expand that. You don't need to. If you did it the other way, where you said 1 half x squared plus 2x plus c, you already have it expanded. Um, so don't worry about that. That's totally fine. All right. Um, so let's take a look at the next part. Y double prime minus 5Y prime minus 6Y equals 0. We want to find all possible values of A such that Y equals E to the AX is a solution to the differential equation. All right, let's just do it. I mean, this is, this is basically a substitution problem and then a little bit of an algebra problem. We're going to need to know what Y prime is, which is going to be A E to the AX. We need to know what Y double prime is which is going to be um, a squared e to the ax. And then we're going to do some substitution, right? So y double prime will become this. Uh, y prime will become a e to the ax. And y is just e to the ax. Making our substitutions, we get a squared e to the ax minus 5 um, a e to the ax. And then minus 6 e to the ax. And then that has to equal 0 because that's just what we're told. Uh, all right, in this case, you can take out e to the ax. Importantly, e to the ax is never equal to zero, so it's not really contributing anything here. Um, so we have e to the ax is not zero, so all we have to worry about is this quadratic, which I'm going to factor into a minus 6, a plus 1. So make sure you factor that correctly, or if you're a little uncertain, just use the quadratic formula. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, all right, so then a would have to equal 6 or a would be negative 1, and those are our answers. If a is 6 or a is negative 1, uh, y equals e to the ax is a solution to the differential equation. We wouldn't be able to solve that at this point in our journey, um, but knowing that it has that form, we can find the values of a. All right, that's the entire quiz. I hope this was helpful, and good luck.